Hey everybody, it's Kate Quinn. Welcome to Free Motion Fridays. Today we're going to use uh, the topic of actually designing a quilt design to suit the project that you have, to suit the block that you have, so that you can have an easier path and that'll help you to move forward and get things quilted more quickly. So right now I have something called preview paper on here. I'm just gonna scoot a couple of these over. This is quilters preview paper right here. And it's got this black line on it. Let's see if I can grab the roll too. quite big you know it's allowing you to design in a fairly good size area so I think it's about 18 inches long and notice that there's this black line this is important because you need to know where the end is because sometimes we start designing and we design right onto the quilt with a non quilt safe marker typically when I am designing I'm using an uh, wet erase marker visa v marker wet erase so typically you know i don't want to dry erase because if i just wipe something off i could end up with marking on whatever right the wet erase is designed to stay on there unless your hands are sweaty like mine sometimes um so i'm using wet erase you can also use a sharpie and what the wet erase is is i can reuse this right i can wipe it off and I can continue drawing. So as I was planning for today, I'll, I'll kind of line this up. You can see that this would be one of these basically aligned, you know, in each of these triangles. And I was thinking I would put um, something here, here, like this. But I didn't really like the path. It wasn't working out. And I was thinking if I did that, I'd kind of be stuck here. And then how would I get out to there? So. What I've done is I've created a design that starts down here at this base right here and fills this in and it ends over here and then the next one will go this way and end over there and this way and then let's say let's mark our start point. If this is the start point and we quilt this and we end over here and we go all the way around this center then I'm going to end right here right where I started. Well, then I can start working this one, this one, and I can go all the way around. And then I do have the potential for a little bit of a different design. But, you know, if I'm working this way, I can try to come back in and do some of these other ones. And I can even adapt potentially the design to maybe do both of these. I mean, I could change the design. But we're going to start with this center and then I'm going to show you the ones that I have for the corner. One of the things I like about doing something like this is then obviously this is very much designed to enhance the piecing of this block. So those are the two features that I wanted to focus on for class today is that we're doing something that is specifically designed to enhance the quilting space that we have and it's continuous. So those are the two features, okay? All right, let's pull this off of here. I'm gonna be using um, two tools today. This is my air erase marker, purple marker, and this one is the roller ball, which I love from Soline. So I did put a link if you're interested in that. And then we need just some simple marking. So I'm gonna be using Donnell's SoBiz ruler. When I started out, I'm putting a little reference line, a half of an inch from the base here. And I did it all the way around. And I'll show you what that's for. It is lightly marked and it's just a little bit of a reference line. Right here, as I'm building this, I kind of want to keep these a little bit aligned. So I don't want this too deep. So the swirl here is kind of centered right on that line. And then this one will be bigger to fill in the space. And the goal is to get three of these in here. So 
let's go ahead and just do one. If we stopped here, visually in your mind, you're splitting this. Like it's not a perfect split, but you're thinking about it as, a, as if this was the middle. So this first part of it right here is going to take up half. Okay, so as I go, I kind of want to dip like a little bracket and I want to come back down and my swirl is going to be centered there. And then I'm, I'm coming back to this midpoint, right? So as I come back, I, I can alternate or I can keep them the same. This first one here, if it's going this way, right? I could make this other one go the other way. You know that, but that adds a layer of complexity. So if you have challenges changing things around, then you're going to want to pay attention to that as you go. Okay. But I'll, I'll see if I can do it. I'll go the other way. Curve, make it a little bigger, right? As you come back to the top, you're going to change directions and go the other way at the top and change directions and go the other way. And here we're going to just come back down right here. And when we get back to this, we're going to go around here for this one and do the bracket and get us back to the corner. So that's kind of what we're looking for. So these can face each other or they can all go the same time. All right. So let's go ahead and start working on that. So I basically have just put just a, that half inch marking and used this and my roller ball in order to do that. Does anybody notice I have a new machine? So right here, I'm gonna pick up my needle right there. My machine has something called one stitch pickup. So it's designed for quilters. It'll take one stitch when it's in the, the new start mode. And I can raise this up and just kind of swath that under there in order to get my thread picked up. I can see it. There it is. I always struggle with picking up thread. I, I, <laughs> my fingers are not as sensitive as they used to be. Let's turn this. Oh, what a, what a good thing for us to practice, right? So of course, we have to go every different direction, right? So I just drew it one way and now I'm sewing it upside down. I don't know. Can I do it? But definitely practice. And remember that that's kind of your midline that you're looking for. And here we go. So you notice I do have some nail polish on. It's pretty faint, but my fingers have just had polish on them for like three years straight. And so I'm, I'm taking a break. Maybe you guys have noticed. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too, too uh, unsightly, right? Let's see. Right there is a little bump. So I'm going to give a little pull to try and get that. Let me raise my foot up. That is too tight. I don't know why it's so tight there. Okay, grip this a little bit. It is stuck right on that bump. Let me see. There we go. Oh, darn it. Well, we'll see how that does later. I got a nice smooth look there. Okay, so as we said, if we're trying to alternate, the white ones are all going to curve this way. So I have to come around this way to get that one in. So here we go. Trying to fill up the space. The ruler foot is really good for that. Go the other way. Get back to the top. And then we want to change directions. So you're going to go the other way. Okay. So as I go, I'm just going to try to follow this. I need to go this way. It's kind of like a figure eight almost as you go back. So it's okay if it's not perfectly aligned right on the other one. It still looks pretty cute, right? Let's see if we can get you in a little tighter right there. You know, right there, you can see it's not right on the line. It's fine. I don't care. All right. So we want to kind of go back to that center line as we make this the middle, right? Curve in and we have to come back around, touch right there at the center. And there's your bracket. And I am going to have to move that foot up. Give me a second. I'm going to change my height a little bit because it's definitely too tight because there's a knot right there. So I've actually just pressed the button. Might even have to move it up just a little bit more right there to get in. 
okay? So again, since I know it's tight right there, I'm gonna grip a little bit more so that I can have a little bit more pressure to get in and get my design smooth, okay? And coming back to the center, because we want this one to come right up the middle, okay? So now, if I want them to kiss, so I'm gonna swing out, make the first one big and fill up the space, back to the center, change directions to go the other way, and change directions to go the other way. This is grading this design so he can fit the space. Let's see, I can't see too good. This thread is a little bit matchy-matchy. Right there. And I wanna come down a little bit further until I'm kind of in the center of this one. And then we'll do the swirl to the outside. And coming back around and making that little brackety swirl. So definitely tight right there with that uh, seam allowance. Maybe I wanna hammer them with a seam mallet. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll do the next one. We're just gonna try to keep going through a couple of these. You can tell that I practiced this not on this exact project, right? I practiced it on something more flat. You'll see it better here. Coming back to the center, we want now these to go um, opposite, right? These are kissing, so then you'll have something opposed. You'll have kissing and then opposite. So when we come in, this one's going to go the opposite way. And as we come, we want to try to fill in sort of a nice big space right there. Come back to the center. Actively change directions with really good intention to the top and go the other way. As we come back out, we're going to figure eight. Back down to the center. And then this one will swirl the opposite way. like a little bracket come back over to this center position so that is going to help filling up all of these center pieces and I had some ideas where when we come back in and we're trying to fill again and we need to get to the other side maybe we could echo right and then echo and that would let us fill up the other side so we'll we'll show you that when we get to that next outer ring uh, let's see. Let's see if we can do this maybe a little bit faster, right? That'll be a kind of our next goal. It'll get smoother as you go. The key thing for me is I am directionally challenged, so I really have to pay attention as we do this first one, make sure that I'm going in the right direction here. And let's change directions. We just came to curve that way. So we'll go the opposite way and the opposite way. So figure eight back out. Oh, I think I went the wrong way, darn it. No, I didn't. I'm good. I was getting myself worried for no reason. You're gonna come underneath and that'll be your little bump right there, your little bracket. As we come around, we'll swoop up, and this line, we don't wanna sort of swing way up tall on that, okay? Get to that corner, come up and do our little bracket curve. Back to the center. Now we have these two together, so this one will be opposite. So as we come up, we wanna go the opposite way. The other direction to the top and go the other direction. When you come back out, try to go figure eight back down to the bottom. Here, curve in. And nice deep bracket and swing over. Okay. Okay. 
and this one, as we swing out, he's gonna match it and go in. Okay, I'll turn it, let's see, we'll turn it this way so you guys can see. We haven't really done it this direction, I guess. So now these will go opposite, so we'll go the other way. And then the other way. So there's a lot of good change of direction practice with this here, actively getting right on that line and kind of coming right back down to the center. Over the top for the swirl and putting the bracket in. Okay, I'll turn it a little bit so you can kind of see on the side as we go. We'll swoop in. We just have these last two. We'll go ahead and finish that and then we'll do at least one down here. Um, as we finish up and you get to this position, we'll be ready to do the triangles here on the bottom. Let me just look real quick and see if we have any questions real fast. All right, let's see. I don't see us on there. Hopefully you guys can hear everything. Let's see if I can get to our questions and comments, right? I think I'm on the wrong page, that's why. Oh, there we go. Got lots of comments. All right, let's make this bigger so I can read it. This morning I thought something said uh, 10 p.m. and it said 1 p.m. and I was reading it without my glasses, so it's kind of funny. Yeah, guy. so obviously you can see I'm having a little difficulty with those um, big seams as well. One of the nice features of this machine is that I can actually raise the foot and lower the foot with the button. So once I'm in this, the ruler work mode, this is the CM17, so this is the new machine that I'm sewing on from Janome, and I can actually raise or lower the foot. One of the challenges that we have on a lot of the domestic machines is if we don't have a button, then we have to loosen the screw and raise the foot and lower it, or we have to ride with the foot a little higher than we want to, which can cause some performance issues. And if I need to pull a little bit, I, I try to grip right near it and just really pull gently because we don't want to torque the needle. That's really important. So there is a little bit of a delicate dance when we're trying to work with areas like this. Another thing that we could do is if we wanted to skirt the seam, like if this was just really too difficult, when you curve out, you could curve short of the seam. Let me draw it in. I'll show you what I mean. So let's say that instead of our bracket coming right to the seam, we could do it like this. We could make the bracket come short, and then we could dip out, and we could start our next bracket over here. This is just something that would work around, and you know you could use a ruler or whatever, and then you would have sort of this little different dance right here. You'd have it be sort of like this, and then this would be where you would go into your curl like that. So there's lots of ways that we can work around that with just some simple things or even just a little curvature. It doesn't have to be something big like that. It could just be a little curl or you can just go bump, bump, make it whatever you want. That's an a easy way then to sort of skirt this area right there if that is too much trouble. Okay, let's see. Um, let me scoot down a little bit and see what the other questions are. Um, see, I am on my M17. It's new for me. I don't know if you guys have seen, but I've been posting. I did some quilting in the hoop, which was kind of cool. And I've done some new projects. This is one that I made. Bam! I'll show you. It's pretty cool. Although I'm going to redesign it because it's not deep enough for some of the bigger um, needle packs. Like this one's pretty thin, but some of the other ones that are a little bit bigger don't fit in there. So I'm going to be doing that, but but I thought it looked so cute. Love this thread. This is uh, Magnifico variegated and um, love it. Absolutely love that. So pretty. Okay. So anyway, sorry. There you go. I'm excited about, <laughs> about playing with new toys. Um, so Dee asked, are you looking into the ruler foot 
to stitch the design. So D, I would love to do that. I would want to be looking in there. However, I'm so far away because of the camera and all the equipment, it's really tricky. So I have to look actually through the eye of the camera, like right here, I'm actually looking through the camera, which is very tricky, right? I mean, it's a little tricky, but it's the only way to give you guys this good unobstructed view. So typically, if I was just quilting for myself, I would really wanna choke up on the machine and sort of be looking right down the visual and into the foot, you bet. I would love to be able to do that. Um, let's see. Um, where are we? Some other questions. Oh, I'm sorry you had a hard time finding the live. I don't know what else to do to make it easier. It's just should show up right at the top. Um, Teresa Becker, you snowy girl. Wausau, Wisconsin. My son just moved to Buffalo, New York, and he's always lived where it's more moderate and warm, and he is in for some uh, heavy snow and challenge. <laughs> so, oh, so many of my friends here, you guys. I love it. Okay, so I kind of went through. So if you have any additional questions, you can go ahead and let me know. We'll just sew these last two and then we'll do one or two of the matching ones and then we'll talk about how we can maybe put some additional stuff in here if we wanted to to do that. Okay, let's go ahead and I'll do it this way to the side and we'll catch up to our last one. So right here it is a little bulky so I'm just going to try and encourage it a little bit. back to the center, reverse. I just wanted to check that this was actually drawn the proper way. Back to the top and change directions. And change directions. Okay, as you come out, look inside the foot. That's what Dee was saying, so that I can follow that line as best I can. And from here, we're gonna go the other way, curve it this direction. So I don't know if you can tell, but I am using my stitch regulator. Um, it's not something that, that I need in the sense that I have a lot of practice managing it, but it does really make the stitches so pretty and I can actually change them. If I wanted, say, three millimeters where the stitches are a little more antique looking, I can actually just dial that up right on the machine and tell it exactly what I want. So let's do this last one. So right here, I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure kind of getting out of there. And I want that little hump that helps create a little smoothness when we come out of there is having a little bit of that curvature, I think, helps make the design a little bit smoother. So nice big one on the bottom. Back to the top, change directions. So I saw this design, I did not create it myself, but I saw a variant of it used on sort of a, um, like a mariner's compass with a deep triangle, a really tall, deep triangle. And they did these like wider, skinnier, skinnier up towards the point. And I really thought that that was very smart, a very smart design. So here's our little curve in there. We'll come back the other way. Try to make that nice round shape there. Okay, so at this point, if I wanted to put one in here, then I literally can go ahead and connect to this one, to this one, to this one, to this one. So we could do all of these matching. We'll do at least one or two so you can see that this kind of creates a diamond of its own. There's a secondary design that it creates. So let me grab that pen and we'll put that little reference mark in there at the half. Once you get to some kind of trained point, you may not need this, but a lot of what we're doing is helping people to develop their visual skills. So what I want is I, I don't want this too deep right? I want to create a little bit of a visual relationship. And this helps me to put that right centered on there. And it makes sure that this part of the dip is not too deep. So it helps regulate this bottom section right there. Okay. 
All right, here we go. So you can tell now we're doing it every different way. So the foot is my guide there, getting me to the center. There's my curve. Okay, so now we gotta think about which direction do we wanna go? Do we wanna have a plan? So whatever this matching white one is, let's make this go the opposite way because I think that'll look nice. We don't have to do that. That's just a random decision. But if this one's going this way, I'm gonna make this one go the other way just because. Okay, so as we said, we're gonna come back to the center. So we'll curve out of there. And this one's going this way, so we wanna kind of curve a little bit to the opposite direction. Change directions. Okay, and change directions. It's a little tiny tight right there. Here we go, follow the line. Back to the center. We're gonna curve around and put our little curly cue in there. And then we'll come over the top. Oh, did I do it wrong? I must have. Oh, I did, whatever, it's fine. Here, we'll fix it. Let's just come around the bottom and put that in there. Nobody will notice, right? It's fine. Let's see if you notice. Yeah, it's a little different. I wouldn't rip it out. I'd just keep going. <laughs> Nobody will notice that. Once once you put all of them in there, it'll all be fine. All right. Um, I want to show you the ideas that I had for the corner. So I'm going to just tie it off real quick right here. We'll just put some tacking stitches right in this line of stitching. Okay, I'm not moving very much, but it still is just stitching kind of at that regulated area. So let's go ahead and pull up the needle and release the foot. It's the same thing we always do, and we'll hold on to that. And then, see, I told you I'm directionally challenged. I think a lot of quilters are. I, I don't think that that is unique. There are some people that are just really awesome with any kind of directional things, but I think there's a lot of us out there that, you know, find that a challenge. So if that is a challenge for you, you can kind of just draw it in, especially this one, right, which is the, the challenge. Make that one and draw those in or have some kind of little directional arrow on it. And that way you can use that as a visual marker. So let's go to the corner real quick. So these ones will have um, the same balance of the design, right? But here we need to be careful on the bottom because we have a seam allowance and we want this design to fill that. So I've actually got kind of a big seam allowance right here, maybe too big. I was following the half inch from that other one, but let's mark the quarter so we actually can see how much room we have. And what I did is I wanna use a design that is closely related. And the reason for that is, you know, obviously these are together. We don't want it, this design down in the corner to look like he has no important relationship. So right here, we're gonna use this part and we're gonna come in and make a big swirl on the bottom, right? And come out to the top. But then this one will have um, very wide right here and then super skinny. So rather than try to put a big one in here and then have a big gap, I'm actually going to put a smaller one towards the center and then just one to fill it. And there'll be nothing right at the top. <coughs> and then we'll follow it back around to the center and we'll do this part and we'll come here right to there, fill in the top and then travel and do the swirl. And the seam line right here is the alignment for that design. <coughs> so it's closely related, but it is adapted to fill the space just a little bit better than if we did the exact same design as we did the other one. Hmm, got a little extra thread there. Okay, so let's come on over here. We'll get set. I'm trying to get right in my ditch right there. So I'll pick that up and get that bobbin thread up. 
So again, like Dee said, I'm, I'm looking through this little cutout as best I can. Since this is a new line of stitching, when I start, I want to kind of tack it in a little bit, and then I can start moving. This one's a little bit bigger than the other ones that we did. Okay, here, change directions. It's a little bit on an angle. And bring this one in towards the top right there. Okay, and then same thing like we did before. We're going to follow it around like a figure eight. Get us back to the center. We'll go this way. Now this one is the tricky one right here. When we get to the top, we have to stop. You know, it's easy to like swing back around the bottom, but we have to pay attention that we are gonna put this in first. So there's this one curling, get to the top and then put the little one in. Kind of fills that up and then just follow it back around. Okay, and now that we're at the top right there, now we can swing down and come back. And you know, I think it does look pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and um, tack it off, but like right here, I could actually fill both of these right now. I could fill this one and come back and fill this one. And that would allow me to move. Let me see if we can pull out. I wanna show you directionality for this last one. Okay, so we're kind of on this corner, right? So right here, I can either go this way from the bottom here. I could fill this one and this one and get to the corner, or I can fill this one and fill this one and this one and this one and get to the corner. There will be some directional challenges, but all of these are sort of connected. And what we did is we eliminated some starts and stops, but not potentially all of them. So that'll just be something for you to think about. I do want to go ahead and cut this real quick. So let me tack it off and I'm going to turn it over because there is a lot of marking here on the front. It's maybe a little bit more challenging to see. So I want to go ahead and flip it over where it's just a single color and you'll be able to see the design. So the tools that we focused on today were just um, the rollerball pen to have some easy marking, the Visa V marker with the quilters preview paper. Ooh, you guys, that looks so awesome. Look at it, doesn't it look so cool? Can you see it? Here, I'll tip it up a little bit. I think it looks so cool, right? Oh my goodness, it turned out, I won't lie, it turned out even better than I thought it was going to. <laughs> I thought it would be pretty, but I think it looks even cooler. So this is kind of a very much a nod to the piecing. And once all those markings are off, you know, it's gonna look good. And then if you feel like you need um, some additional quilting, like you could come back in here and echo the center if you wanted to, or you can do some echoing in here if you wanted to and go around. I don't think I need any, I mean, that's like one fingertip. That's maybe two fingertips. I think it's good enough, but I think you'll, here's down on the corner. I think that corner is gonna look good too as everything gets connected. So I'll go ahead and finish up the sample. One other comment I wanted to make about making something like this as opposed to working and doing the triangle is that there's no stitching in the ditch with this design. We don't have to. Um, so that's one of the things that I like about it. Notice that maybe there's a little bit a bigger space on one side. So maybe I need to work on making sure that my swirl here is better centered because some of them are a little better. And I would maybe make this one a little bigger. So just as I evaluate my own skills and my own uh, development, I'm not gonna rip any of this out. I think it looks fine, I, but these are things that as you assess yourself, you can say, okay, I wanna work on this. Okay, I wanna work on that. So always, you know, those are your internal monologues that you're working on. It's not like I'm gonna go say, oh, look, it, see this one's bigger, that one's too small, whatever. No, just let them enjoy that it's beautiful and it looks fine. 
but we're here to improve our skills, so it's okay for you to evaluate that and say, I want to work on this or that. Okay, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed it. And last week, it seemed like people were really happy with the feather. That one got a lot of good uh, press and awareness. So we'll just keep trying to find new cool things. And I hope you guys have a happy holidays. Note that I won't be available uh, for Free Motion Fridays the week of Christmas. I may be available the week of uh, New Year's. I'm not sure right now. That's like December 29th or 30th, something like that. Not sure. So please look for the note. I will put a note about a, an hour or two ahead or at least try to put it out maybe on the a couple days before if I'm able to to do that. Okay. So looking forward to seeing my friends at Road to California. I, I, there's quite a few out there that are signed up. I can't wait. So we'll see you soon. Take care. Happy holidays, you guys. Bye-bye.